The Delahaye 135 is a luxury car manufactured by French automaker Delahaye. Designed by engineer Jean-Francois, it was produced from 1935 until 1954 in many different body styles. A sporting tourer, it was also popular for racing. The Delahaye 135, also known as Coupe des Alpes, after its success in the Alpine Rally, was first presented in 1935 and signified Delahaye's decision to build sportier cars than before. The 3.2-liter overhead valve straight six with four-bearing crankshaft was derived from one of Delahaye's truck engines and was also used in the more sedate, longer wheelbase, 3,160 mm or 124 inches, Delahaye 138. Power was 95 horsepower, 71 kilowatt, in twin carburetor form, but 110 horsepower, 82 kilowatt, were available in a version with three downdraft Solex carbs, offering a 148 kilometers per hour, 92 miles per hour, top speed. The 138 had a single carburetor and 76 horsepower, 57 kilowatt, and was available in a sportier 90 horsepower, 67 kilowatt, iteration. The 135 featured independent, leaf-sprung front suspension, a live rear axle, and cable-operated Bendix brakes. 17-inch spoke wheels were also standard. Transmission was either a partially synchronized 4-speed manual or 4-speed Codal pre-selector transmission. Competition 135 set the all-time record at the Ulster Tourist Trophy and placed second and third in the Mill Miglia in 1936, and the 1938 24 Hours of Le Mans. The list of independent body suppliers offering to clothe the 135 chassis is the list of France's top coach builders of the time, including Figoni and Falashi, Le Dernor et Marchand, Alphonse Guillaure, Marcel Pertou, Frères Dubois, Jacques Sauchik, Marius Franet, Henri Chapron, Faggot Varney, Antum, and others. Production of the 3.2-liter version ended with the German occupation in 1940 and was not taken up again after the end of hostilities. A larger displacement, 3,557 cubic centimeters, 135 m was introduced in 1936. Largely the same as the regular 135, the new engine offered 90, 105, or 115 horsepower, with either 1, 2, or 3 carburetors. As with the 135-138s, a less sporty, longer wheelbase version was also built, called the 148. The 148 had a 3,150 mm wheelbase, or 3,350 mm in a 7-seater version. On the two shorter wheelbases, a 134N was also available, with a 2,150 cubic centimeters 4-cylinder version of the 3.2-liter 6 from the 135. Along with a brief return of the 134, production of 148, 135M, and 135 Mega Siemens models was resumed after the end of the war. The 135 and 148 were then joined by the 1-liter larger engine Delahaye 175 175th S, 178, and 180, being an entirely new series that was under development before the war. When the large displacement chassis series was discontinued in 1951, the 135M was updated to be introduced as the Type 235, as a last-ditch effort to save Delahaye. It was a fine product, and was offered until the demise of Delahaye in 1954. Only 84 examples were built. Presented in December 1938 and built until the outbreak of war in 1940, the Type 168 used the 148L's chassis and engine, engine code 148N, in Renault Viva Grand Sport bodywork. Wheelbase remained 315 centimeters while the use of artillery wheels rather than spoked items meant minor differences in track. This curious hybrid was the result of an effort by Renault to steal in on Delahaye's lucrative near monopoly on fire vehicles. After a complaint by Delahaye, Renault relinquished contracts it had gained, but in return Delahaye had to agree to purchase a number of Viva Grand Sport body shells. In an effort to limit the market of this cuckoo's egg, thus limiting the number of body shells it had to purchase from Renault, Delahaye chose to equip it with the unpopular Wilson preselector, even though the marketing material referred to the Codal version. This succeeded very well, and with the war putting a stop to car production, no more than 30 were supposedly built. Strong, wide, and fast, like their Viva Grand Sport half-sisters, the 168s proved popular with the army. Many were equipped to run on gazogene during the war and very few, if any, remained.
an even sportier version, the 135 Mega Siemens, soon followed. 120 to 145 horsepower were available, with competition versions offering over 160 horsepower. The 135 Mega Siemens was the version most commonly seen in competition, and continued to be available until 1954, when new owners Hotchkiss finally called a halt. The MS had the 2.95-meter wheelbase, but competition models sat on a shortened 2.70-meter chassis. The Type 235, a rebodied 135 Mega Siemens with Ponton-style design by Philippe Charbonneau, appeared in 1951. The 135 was successful as a racing car during the late 1930s, winning the Monte Carlo Rally in 1937 and 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1938. The Le Mans victory, with Chabud and Trimolet at the wheel, was decisive, with two more Delahays coming in second and fourth. A regular 135 came seventh at the 1935 Le Mans, and in 1937 135 Mega Siemens came in second and third. Appearing again in 1939, two 135 Mega Siemens made it to 6th and 8th place, and again after the war the now venerable 135 Mega Siemens finished in 5th, 9th, and 10th. 135s finished 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 7th, 11th and 12th in the 1936 French sports car Grand Prix at Montlhery. John Crouch won the 1949 Australian Grand Prix driving a 135 MS.